senior living project, we noticed that you guys have entered in the Pune market, right? And this project called Ashiana Amot Senior Living. Correct. I want to know about this project. First of all, what made you enter Pune market? And coming to the second follow-up to that would be the delivery time of the project, which I have noticed is scheduled in October 2026. How would you make sure that the preferences and the needs are still met with your targeted audience? Well, uh, so really we thought Pune is a big market from a very big name. So mm -hmm. actually we signed up our second senior living in Lavasa and then Jaipur. But with Lavasa, all the challenges which came in, yeah. uh, we just delivered our project, but uh, with the different challenges which came in, we were not able to make it successful. And from 2012, we've been looking for land in, uh, in, uh, in Pune. Mm. And for some reason or the other, I always used to say, Pune doesn't love me. And there was a big sign that used to say, I love Pune. Mm. And I used to say, Pune doesn't love me. And over the last three, four years, I think uh, Pune started loving me. And... Uh, and I think we got the two lands and we're doing one regular housing and one senior living. And I think the market lies not just in Pune and Mumbai. Mm. And the, again, if you look at the demographics of seniors, uh, after Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra is the number two market, if you look at the percentage of seniors mm. with per capita. And that made us very interested in the Talegao market because Talegao itself is on a very nice elevation. Uh, it's got very nice views. It's got great weather. Yeah. It's got connectivity both to Mumbai and Pune, so it attracts both uh, both the crowd. So from mm. a perspective of the land, I thought it was just a perfect and again great land partners in Wakefield, uh, yeah. who who are great people and uh, lovely to meet. So it kind of just went check checklist by checklist, and I think we uh, when we design our product, uh, and that's my elder brother. I think he does a phenomenal job on the design side. He uh, so we look at in the phase one when we deliver, we deliver all of our amenities with the phase one. So the largest part of the amenities, which is the club, actually we are looking at getting it ready uh, early next year, May June next year. Okay. And uh, so the consumer will be getting all the services up front, uh, mm. not all, but most of them. Mm. Uh, there will be obviously some uh, uh, missing and we will try to make sure that uh, everything is ready and we've got really like a uh, very good response from the market. Uh, whatever we expected, we have kind of uh, gone 20% above what we expected. So the additional services which I have heard of Ashiana Housing is that you guys also provide the resale and rental services. So how do you ensure a customer satisfaction for both buyers and tenants and how does this fit in to the overall, you know, success of the business? I'm kind of questioning that right now, honestly. I don't mm -hmm. know. Uh, so it's a service we started. A lot of our buyers used to be NRIs. We used to be outskirts of locations. So people to travel was very difficult. Uh, earlier, there were no brokers in location we used to sell. Mm -hmm. So there, if somebody wanted to transact, he used to transact through our estate manager. You know, he used to uh, the customer to the customer. Mm. And it was very unorganized. So we said, if it's happening unorganized and they're getting dissatisfied, we'll organize it. So we went from that mindset that our team was already helping, but not in a very disorganized fashion. So we said, let's organize it. Let's put pressure on ourselves to get rentals and resale done. But now what has happened is because Ashana is doing the resale rental, the expectation of the consumer who's selling or renting it is that he Raj Bula hai. To hui jana chi, yeah, yeah. But the markets are not allowing it. So when the yeah. downturn happened, we really actually, we didn't do as good of a job, personally. Of, honestly, we hmm. didn't do as good of a job. And consumer expectations were very high from us. And uh, I think uh, there I felt like, you know, we let down our consumers in some ways. So I think one of the things we learned is that we want the market forces to run, regular hmm. market forces. We don't want to control everything. So luckily by the time we were, uh, in the last few years, brokers have come in and mm. we kind of collaborated with them and said, let's let's get some exits from our consumers. From a perspective, the only thing we make sure is it's a very transparent deal. Uh, pricing is very clear. Uh, we don't want to uh, be dishonest about what product is available in the market. So we kind of clear, clearly say that these are the market products available. These are the pricing in the market. So there is very, very clear transactions, both for the buyer and seller. Mm. Uh, and we stand by it what we do so it's more about uh, uh, transparency of deal making mm. uh, than anything else uh, but uh, yeah it's been challenging honestly so in 2018 uh, you guys had a partnership with IFC and now you have revisit that partnership 
could you tell us about this business proposal how it is benefiting both the parties and what kind of partnership is this all about so honestly my younger brother handled the finance side so if you ask me truly what what goes on i wouldn't be very very strong at it mm. uh, but the general idea is basically we need money to develop and they provide the money and they take a return on it obviously they have very high standards on the developer they choose and the product they choose uh, they want to make sure that because it's a world bank organization that they're uh, they're they're funding products of a certain kind so we fall into that product category uh, so i think that's one part of it and the second is that they're happy as a developer to work with we have done uh, so the first uh, round i think it was about 150 crores and we have done three transactions with them on that one in jaipur one in gurgaon and one in uh, uh, chennai the jaipur and the gurgaon one have done very very well uh, and i i am sure they will make good returns on it uh, for us the chennai is yet to start and i think there also the, the returns should be very good and this is mainly focused for the senior living projects no it's focused for regular housing also there's a okay. price band uh, okay. so every city has a different price band again my elder uh, younger brother would know much more about it mm. but my understanding is there's a price bracket where a certain percentage of your product has to be below a particular price band so that you're catering to a mid income segment yeah uh, so depending on the city that mid income so gurgaon would have a higher mid in- yeah. income segment to a uh, jaipur and senior living is a, a total criteria they they are so in chennai is the one we are going to do senior living with them the one in gurgaon we've done kids centric and in uh, jaipur which is almost delivered uh, uh, is like now and talking about kids centric approach i think uh, apart from gera developments you guys are doing into it how did this concept started with ashiana housing to focus on kid centric and what it is about for our viewers to understand what exactly is kid centric project uh, so from a kid centric perspective so this started uh, i think 2015 or 16 if i remember so we have a, a coach out of the of out of canada who kind of uh, helps us with our annual and uh, six month planning so one of the things we in that we have to do is what swat and one of the trends we were seeing and one of the trends was this double income households we were seeing people spending a lot on the kid but not having the time for it because yeah. it became double income so we saw some trends mm. we were seeing the trends we saw again like in the us we hear this called thing called the soccer mom and we thought as soon as we saw the double income people wanted to spend on the kids not having time it basically meant soccer mom is getting alive in india also and we needed to release that time for our our, our consumers recent report by night frank it co- it shows some very interesting trends in indian real estate market you know where the mid segment homes are uh, going bit up as compared to affordable homes where do you think this change is happening in terms of buyer preferences and how does a developer make sure that the affordable homes doesn't get affected or make sure that it caters to all kind of you know in- income segment um, truly speaking affordable homes you know a lot of people had branded us as affordable homes we were, we were never affordable homes we were always mm-hmm. a premium of the market uh, to us affordable homes are very difficult to do and uh, i i think the cost side doesn't allow it okay so yeah. we have to be very careful while doing affordable homes and i know some companies talk about affordable homes and things like that but when you look at the balance sheets and stuff like that uh, they're not very strong it's very difficult to do high quality affordable homes and mm. the i think it's not a developer's responsibility as a country if you want to do affordable homes if you see world over affordable homes mm. they largely come on outskirts and uh, where land prices are uh, cheaper so we i think what is happening in india from an infrastructure perspective if that continues to happen and our design philosophy where we don't run after fsi mm. and run after uh, doing work at lower fsi i think will help affordable housing because as soon as you go if you have to do affordable housing and you have to go high rise yeah. cost of construction goes and kills affordable housing True. so i think this run for fsi from a developer perspective needs to stop mm. and secondly i think the design thinking which uh, the 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 local government needs to have on affordable housing has mm. to be very very clear uh, and if infrastructure goes in i think affordable housing will work